The horror genre has dozens upon dozens of subgenres. We can be simple and talk about slashers, psychological horrors, the paranormal, uh, or we can be super specific and talk about torture films, cannibalism, neo monsters. You get the gist. For every film and every subgenre, there is potential for a franchise. But when we get down to The Exorcist, the movie that is widely considered to be the greatest horror film of all time, its sequels never saw success. And there's probably about 70 films that have some type of exorcism plot. I, I can think of at least 10 that have the words exorcist or exorcism in the title. It's a subgenre that does well enough, but there's little doubt that these films will ever match the brilliance of the original. After the original storyline was stretched paper thin in its two sequels, it seemed a prequel was in order. I mean, after all, prequels were all the rage in the early 2000s. But audiences were confused to say the least when the prequel to the greatest horror film of all time came out twice with two different titles. It came out with the same star but different casts. The Exorcist prequel was for some reason two different films. 2004's Exorcist The Beginning and 2005's Dominion prequel to The Exorcist. So God help us, we're about to dig into this. God is not here today, priest. Why would a studio make two movies that are essentially the same? And we're about to figure it out. And as we often ask ourselves, what the f happened to this horror movie? The past few years have given us quite a few films that would make any fan of horror proud. We've seen The Nightingale and The Babadook, two films that seem very comfortable in the darker territories, so long as they connect the audience on a human level. Ari Aster made a name for himself with modern classics like Midsummer or Hereditary, with even that drawing comparisons to the 1973 classic The Exorcist. Yet even with those comparisons and their accompanying glowing reviews, Hereditary is considered by many to be eh, overrated. But there was a time that a film was agreed to be the scariest experience ever put to film. After the success of the original, neither William Friedkin or William Peter Blatty showed any interest in returning to the story they created. And by all accounts, they were done, finished. But just because the director and the writer of a classic don't want to return, <laughs> it doesn't stop Hollywood. We're in the money. On June 17th, 1977, Exorcist II The Heretic was released. The reception to the sequel was piss poor, and it's to this day considered to be one of the worst films ever made. Friedkin, director of the original Exorcist himself, described in a 2019 podcast how he found himself watching some of the film in a Technicolor lab. I was over there doing something else and I said, okay, sure. So I went in the screening room and I see some guys riding on the back of a bumblebee <laughs> or some fucking thing it was unreal. And I, oh, and I, I left. It's the worst piece of shit I've ever seen. It's a fucking disgrace. Good thing is that quote didn't quite make it into advertising, but uh, who knows, it might have helped. In an attempt to course correct the disaster that was the sequel, William Peter Blatty returned to the franchise to write and direct The Exorcist 3 in 1990. Adapting a novel he had written as a sequel to the original called Legion, the third installment of the franchise was received slightly better than The Heretic, and while many consider it to be a bit too talky, it did feature genuine scares that rivaled the original, including what is widely considered to be one of the greatest jump scares of all time. It didn't receive the best reviews when it was released, but uh, you know, like everything else, it has grown more beloved by fans over time. The film had breathed new life into the franchise, but a decade later without a new installment, that new life was being sucked right back out. It was at this point that Warner Brothers felt a new direction was needed if The Exorcist was to stay afloat. And since the original was the most critically acclaimed film out of the three, maybe moving backward in time was the best direction forward. Which brings us to Exorcist 4. The prequel, or prequels. In 2002, John Frankenheimer was hired to direct a prequel to The Exorcist. Yeah, you know what, a prequel actually wasn't a bad idea. This was set up at the beginning of the original film. I mean, the opening scene of The Exorcist has Father Marin at a dig site in Iraq. He sees a statue of a demon that would normally be off-putting to, you know, most people, but it comes across as familiar, which indicates that he's seen the statue or something like it before. Hey, this is an interesting ground to explore, and Frankenheimer had nothing but potential and promise ahead of him. Lee Neeson was eyed as the man to play Father Marin and was eventually hired. The production was set to begin in the summer of that year. 
Unfortunately, Frankenheimer also passed away that summer. After the director had passed, the film lost its star as well, and Liam Neeson chose to exit. Paul Schrader, writer of Taxi Driver, Raging Bull, and more recently First Reformed, was brought in to direct, because in addition to being an incredible writer, Schrader also happens to direct from time to time. He's known for directing Cat People and uh, American Gigolo. Well, you know, directing isn't his strong suit, it's not a weak point either. He's good, he's just an incredible writer. Overall, Schrader is a legend who shouldn't need an explanation or a resume here. Skardsgar was then cast as Father Mirren, and the chips fell into place. Now, Schrader wasn't hired to write the film, just to direct it. Why wouldn't you want Schrader writing is beyond me. But it was written by William Wisher, who is probably best known for co-writing Terminator 2 Judgment Day. And Caleb Carr, who is best known for writing, well, uh, Exorcist 4, unfortunately. So finally in 03, production began in the film, and this is where details get a little muddy. Schrader insists he was faithful to the script that Wisher and Carr had written, and he was nearing the end of production, but for some reason Morgan Creek wasn't happy with the result, especially the manner in which Schrader deconstructed the exorcism itself. In fact, they were happy enough to hold off in releasing it. That's when Rennie Harlan was hired. Harlan has a number of credits to his name, Die Hard 2, Nightmare on Elm Street 4, but last but not least, First, we're gonna seal off this movie. When Harlan was hired, one of his primary jobs was to reintroduce the grotesque components that contributed to the shock value of the original. Compared to The Exorcist, the gore in Schrader's version was actually scaled way, way back. As Schrader wanted to focus more on the dramatic aspects of the story, like the tragic past of Father Marin. So he's hired for basic reshoots in the film, and to, you know, add a little bit of gore. But uh, basic reshoots wasn't um, what Harlan had in mind when taking the job. After all, the man perhaps best known for ripping Samuel L. Jackson in half uh, ain't basic. I said, you know, just a couple of scenes, just a little fix here and there, and then, then we are fine. The end of the process that started with me working on the movie for a few days, uh, I ended up reshooting the entire movie. We reworked the script, became pretty much its own piece that wasn't the same story anymore. And we shot the film from the first frame to the last. If Morgan Creek was willing to pay, you know, for just, uh, what, three weeks of reshoots to fix a flawed film, why not pay for eight to make an entirely new one? Please understand how unprecedented this is. A director was hired for a basic reshoot and was able to convince the production studio to scrap those plans and instead allow him to make his own movie on their dime. Morgan Creek clearly thought they were back in the right horse with Harlan. The film was released in 04 under the name Exorcist The Beginning, and unfortunately, but somewhat predictably, the film was a financial and critical failure. After news came out of a whole different film version, horror fans wanted to see the prequel part two, to see exactly what Schrader had worked on. After all, the name Schrader speaks for itself in Hollywood. And with websites doing reports on films in the early 2000s, like Joe Blow's own air on the head doing a set visit for the beginning in 03, Schrader's vision being scrapped became the real story of The Exorcist 4. Fans demanded to see the Schrader cut, much like fan demands for the Snyder cut, eh, just without billboards and unreasonable demands. You get the idea. After some internal discussion, probably about just tossing out a film with a small budget that was near completion, Morgan Creek brought Schrader back to finish what was left of his film. And he actually agreed. And so his vision, his version of the film, was released in limited theaters on video in 2005 under the name Dominion, a prequel to The Exorcist. That is how two films, both prequels to The Exorcist, both written by the same team of writers, both starring Skarsgar, and both telling the origins of Father Marin, were released seven months apart from each other. Yet with so many similarities, the films are very different, even if they're telling the same story, which is the story of Father Marin. In the beginning, the film opens in an ancient battlefield where tons of people were crucified upside down. Now we cut to Father Marin in 1949, who has decided to stop being a priest after taking part in the massacre of his own congregation during World War II. Now he left all that behind to pursue archaeology, as you often do. He goes on an excavation site where digs have uncovered the ancient relics of a demon. And there he meets Father Francis and Dr. Novak, and the latter is haunted by her experiences in a concentration camp. She witnesses massacres. He is responsible for massacres. Cue the sexual tension. Long, long, very long story short, strange things start happening. Dozens of grave sites are empty. Stillborn babies are being covered in maggots. Kids are being attacked by hyenas. 
Human sacrifice, dogs and cats living together, mass hysteria. Dr. Novak ends up being possessed. Mirren exercises the demon and becomes a priest again. In Dominion, the film actually starts off with Father Mirren in World War II. Cut to Mirren being an archaeologist, checking out a dig site. He meets Father Francis and the doctor, now named Rachel. Same characters, different actors. The dig site in the area uncovers a church that actually predates Christian missions in the region. And strange things begin happening, including physical changes to a young disabled man in the area named... Chichi? Yes. Fast forward a bit, and he is the one that's possessed. Kind of looking like Buddha. Marin shows up in full priest garb, exercises the demon, and all ends well. Marin becomes a priest again. Listen, we skipped over a lot, it's true. But it's also kind of easy to blur these two films together. Both films show a broken father, Marin, having lost his faith after forcefully being complicit in horrific war crimes of World War II. In both films, Father Marin regains his faith after overcoming each film's demon. But the differences, the small things, are what make these movies interesting, and horror fans have long debated which of the two they prefer. I didn't say which of the two is the best, because, you know, let's be honest, we all kind of lost with these films. Exorcist The Beginning is rated at a humiliating 10% on Rotten Tomatoes, where Dominion holds a 30%. Oh, way to go, Dominion. You won that round. William Peter Blatty, the writer of The Exorcist and writer slash director of The Exorcist 3, is quoted saying, watching Exorcist The Beginning was his most humiliating professional experience. Estimated budget for the prequel or both films was around 80 million. 30 million went to Schrader's version and about 50 went to Harlan's. Exorcist The Beginning grossed around 76 million dollars at the box office, while Dominion around 252,000 in the US. So at least the beginning almost made its money back. But to be fair, Dominion had a very limited release. It's hard to say which is better. Exorcist the beginning definitely dialed up the horror compared to Schrader's version, but Dominion is far more compelling of a story. And in an unbiased observation, it's visually stunning throughout. Morgan Creek wanted so badly for either of these prequels to be not only accepted, but loved by fans of the franchise. Unfortunately, both films fell flat. Which brings us to now, it's been over a decade, which is right on target for Morgan Creek to figure out what they want to do with the franchise. And, surprise to none, Morgan Creek has a reboot of The Exorcist planned for 2021. Now, before you decide to freak out, giving them the benefit of the doubt, it was announced as a reboot, not a remake. So it is possible they could do something very creative, very different with it. Of course, it's also possible they could take a classic and pull an Exorcist 4 with the material. There's already a petition on change.org to prevent that from happening, with a whopping 460 signatures. Translation, get ready for a remake. Hey, thanks for watching our show. If you like what you see, please subscribe to our Joe Below Horror Videos channel. Tell your friends you like this sort of content, and turn on the bell, you know the one, to receive notifications for all of our latest videos. You know, we're an independent company, and we appreciate all of your support. I went to a wake on the soak streets of Blue Island. And my father, though a strong man, you know, I swear I saw him crying. Another generation gone has seen south side and